Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. My name is Victor Fey. I am vice president of uh, Matriz Official. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, please indicate somehow in chat that you can hear me. Yes, we can. Excellent. Uh, so today yes. I have a pleasure of uh, introducing um, to you the second uh, webinar of our webinar series. Uh, it will be um, conducted by uh, Valery Sushko, who is also uh, my colleague at uh, Matriz Official, uh, Vice President of uh, our association, and he's a leading authority in a relatively new application of trees, uh, it's the application of trees in business. And the topic of today's presentation is uh, accelerating business innovation with trees or business trees. Uh, so without much ado, uh, Valerie, the screen is yours. Oh, oh I'm sorry, before we uh, start, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them um, in the chat, type them in uh, the chat. And uh, when uh, Valerie is over with his presentation, uh, you will have a chance to uh, hear his answers to your questions. Valerie, please. Okay, Victor, thank you very much. And um, good um, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thanks uh, you for visiting our webinar. Uh, it is a second webinar in a series of webinars started by Matriz Official. You probably know that Matriz Official is a spin-off of Old Matriz Association, launched in September last year. So my topic today is Business Trees, Accelerating Business Innovation. Um, our webinar will take one hour uh, and uh, about 40 minutes I will do my presentation and then 20 minutes is left uh, for my answers to your questions. So as uh, Mr. Fay said, uh, please write your questions in a chat windows window whenever you have one. Okay. So let us start. Um, this is a slide uh, to uh, <laughs> show who I am. Uh, probably not everybody knows me. <laughs> um, I started my tourist career in 1989 since uh, co-founding Invention Machine Corporation. And uh, Invention Machine Corporation was a company uh, which disseminated trees around the world with the help of software which was called Invention Machine. Uh, a spin-off of this software still exists. It's called Goldfire, uh, but it's mostly sold to corporate customers. At this moment I had a company, uh, ICG Train Consulting, founded in 2003, and um, I'm president of International Business Trees Association and uh, vice president and board member of uh, Matriz Official. So just a very short about me. <laughs> <coughs> so we all know that Trees is uh, and was created and still evolving to support technical invention, technical innovation. However, um, Recently, it became obvious that technical innovation uh, to compete on a global space, especially on a global scale, uh, to innovate only in technological world is not enough. Uh, it became clear that uh, competition is uh, growing in a business area. So two companies might uh, propose to the market very competitive products, but those companies which will have a winning um, business model uh, will definitely win. Also, the, um, both products can be very competitive. If we look back 120, 140 years, uh, a capitalism was pretty straightforward. Most of what was uh, interested uh, were revenues, profit and market size. Uh, these were the key criteria which distinguished uh, uh, companies from each other. However, if we look today, 
we will see that the number of these criteria uh, has uh, immensely grown. It is a value proposition. It is a growth potential. It is intellectual property, social impact, reputation, trust, customer experience, ecology, sustainability, global networking. All these factors impact the value of your business, value of your company. And uh, innovation can be done uh, with regard to any of these factors. And it is being done. So, uh, if we look at the technology, when we talk about innovation, so mostly we're talking about innovation in two categories, either innovation of products or innovation of manufacturing. Well, actually, we have to create these products and manufacturing are processes which are presented and described to create the products. However, when we look at a business innovation, we see also two categories of innovation. These are business systems, first of all, uh, which are represented through business models. And business system is your company or your organization or your network of companies. And business products, which are services. When I speak about insurance, healthcare, entertainment, hotel, horeca, it's all about processes in which we do not create products, but we uh, create services which target at uh, satisfying specific customer needs. So these are two large categories of business innovation. Uh, there is a big difference between technical innovation and business innovation. Technical innovation can be patented and protected. You can uh, patent your product and uh, enjoy uh, living for 20, 25 years, as long as patent is valid. And um, be sure that uh, nobody will steal your idea, your product. However, in business, the competition is more fierce because you cannot patent your business model. You cannot patent your service. Well, in some countries, uh, there are uh, patents for business process, but uh, not in many. For instance, in Europe, there are no patents for business services. So you have to be quick, quick as possible with all possible improvements, uh, eliminating uh, elimination of harmful effects, and so forth. That makes uh, demands for business innovation even more stricter than demands for technological innovation, where you can still be protected. Also, yes, today we have uh, different ways uh, to run about uh, patents, but still, <laughs> there are very strong patents. If you look at evolution of trees, you know that trees uh, was established. Well, the date of birth of trees is 1956, when Henry Halschur published a first article about trees. And uh, this article was published in a journal, Questions of Psychology, in the Russian language, in Russia, in 1956, where he presented the first core concepts of trees. It, was, it gave birth to technical trees, how we call it. And technical trees, this red line, it is still evolving. It, it, it's a, a large framework of tools and processes which support and uh, target at different innovation tasks. However, uh, let's say in 1954, uh, the first research in non-technical trees was uh, initiated. Um, uh, the first articles were published by Boris Lotin and Alas Usman uh, back in 1984-86 about the trends of evolution of um, uh, communities. And these uh, articles are still valid today. In 1994, a St. Petersburg School of uh, uh, Trees started exploration in trees for marketing, trees for public relations, trees for advertisement. And back in 1999, uh, me, in cooperation with some other uh, people, we decided that uh, trees uh, has to be valid not only for technical areas, 
but for business systems as well. And the research has started. And today, uh, I must say that trees for business and management, we call it business trees. Business trees is already a well established and uh, um, a system which has training programs uh, of all five levels, just like a technical trees. You know probably that there are five levels of certification introduced by uh, Henry Halschuler and uh, later uh, formalized by Matrix Association. And today we have exactly the same system for business trees. So in this overview, I will give you a in this uh, presentation, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what a business trees today is and what its state of art of today is. So, when we speak about business innovation, what kind of categories and tasks for innovation exist? You know that in technical trees, we have a selection of more than 30 different tools. And uh, people who are not familiar with trees or innovation usually ask, why do you mean, mean uh, such so many tools? Or you, you, all what you need is just a single tool to create a new idea, right? <laughs> it's right, but ideas are produced for different goals. For example, improve quality. It's the first category. It is where you eliminate negative, unwanted, undesired effects within a business system or a business product. When I speak about business product, I speak about a service. Uh, second, you want to improve imp uh, performance of your business system or your service. Third, you want to radically decrease cost-creating factors within a business system or within a process of delivery service. Then you want to improve design and psychological attractiveness of your business product. Then you want to improve user experience with your business product. Um, well, a simple, a simple example, when you go to a dentist, uh, it's probably not the task you want to do every day. <laughs> but if uh, uh, you enjoy going to a dentist, then you will definitely have a good experience with visiting a dentist. <laughs> then adding a new fashion functionality to the existing business models or value proposition or a service. Then when you have a new service, you might search for a new uh, market for it, like insurance. Insurance was invented uh, to insure goods uh, for travelers, but then Insurance was uh, extended to different goals to uh, insure your houses, insure your life, insure your pets, and so on. Expand and transform or create a new value networks. Because today, you know, all businesses uh, are operate on the basis of value networks. It's only a small company in some small geographical space can generate without value network. And finally, create a radically new or disruptive business model or value proposition. So when you create a new business model or a new type of service, you create something really new. Or you create a disruptive business model or value proposition. Disruptive means not radical, new. You don't invent a new uh, value of parameter. With a disruptive, you create a similar product which is exists or a similar service, but many times cheaper than the existing one. So you um, win on a cost side. So in this slide, I showed you the uh, categories of business innovation, which are available today. And to deal with those categories of innovation, business trees has three large areas. The first large area, a red one, is uh, for solving specific business problems and challenges. You know, uh, when you want to uh, solve a, a certain problem, there are millions and billions of problems arising every day in business. Most of them can be solved with the traditional standard methods, which are already known, 
always optimization. But there are always problems which cannot be solved with optimization or known methods or known solutions. So in this case, you need to go out of the box. You need to come up with some um, creative idea which hasn't existed before in your area. And to do this, you know, uh, if you know technical trees, you know how to do it in technical trees. The question is how to do it in business. And in business, the way of dealing with problems is the same as with technology. Uh, why it is so? Because in business and in technology, we deal with utilitarian systems. Systems which are created for satisfying our needs. So you can think about a system as a continuation of a human being. If you have a hammer, a hammer is nothing more like uh, than, than our fist, <laughs> which can uh, hit the nail. So a hammer is, you can see, how uh, as a continuation or extension of our fist, of our arm. Um, and the way uh, people solve problems for utilitarian systems um, are actually, on an abstract level, are the same. No matter what you do, you improve a hammer or you improve your company. Well, it sounds a little bit crazy, but believe me, it is true. Uh, well, today we don't have time to uh, show you how it works and why it is so, but um, most of trees patterns, you know, technical trees patterns, which were developed uh, during 70 years of trees existence, uh, appeared to be valid for transforming business systems whenever you have the same type of problems. Well, like, uh, what do I mean? Like a harmful effect emerging. Like when you hit a nail, uh, you can damage your fingers. Or when you sell a service, you can damage your customer, especially if you uh, sell it wrong or you sell it to a wrong customer. Uh, so this red area, it's the first level of business trees, targets at uh, solving specific problems. Second area, a blue area. A blue area uh, deals with improving of the existing business systems or business products. Uh, we look at the system uh, or a service and analyze its innovation potential on the basis of um, analyzing functionality or interactions within a system or within a system and its super system. A super system of a system is whole envi uh, external environment which surrounds the system, interacts with it, but is not a part of a system. Well, if you take a school, for example, uh, the teachers, uh, books, library, classes are all part of a system. But uh, 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 children, their parents are not part of the system. They are super system. Um, so the second blue area is to improve the systems by finding disadvantages within existing systems. And the third uh, green circle is uh, because, you know, in trees, in technical trees, uh, during long-term studies, it was discovered that uh, all systems evolve according to certain trends and regularities. Um, then this uh, green area uh, consists tools and knowledge for forecasting and road mapping of new innovations in business. Because similar trends as for technology, similar trends exist for business uh, systems and business services and products. For example, a trend of functionality evolution, which consists of 18 steps. The same trend exists for technology and the same trend exists for business systems. Exactly the same 18, 18 steps. And it's just one line. We know about 35 lines. Uh, along which line we can evaluate where your business system is now and uh, create a radar 
on which we will see on each 45 lines where your system is now. And the unoccupied space along each line will help you to forecast evolution of your business system. Um, in this slide, I showed the tools which are used at each of the areas. Uh, level 1, specific challenge, problem solving. Level 2, innovating an existing system. And level 3, uh, future innovation and road mapping. Well, I will not uh, explain the details now. You will get this presentation after uh, afterwards and uh, you can see of each tool and read which tools are in each of the levels. Let me remind you of three major postulates of modern trees. Well, it's written all business systems, but you can read also all technical systems. Because again, as I said, both technical systems and business systems are utilitarian systems, which evolve according to the same trends and regularities. However, if you, often I'm asked, why don't you apply trees to social system? Um, in social systems, the uh, rules of uh, systems formation and transformation are different. And the goals are also different. That's why I say, yes, trees definitely works in social systems. But we need a special version of trees for social systems. Because uh, the business trees version, uh, it took me approximately 15 years to adapt the existing trees tools and develop new tools to create a trees which is adapted to business, uh, business, business framework. Because the classical trees, if you take it and start teaching business people with the classical trees, uh, you will create a cognitive gap. Uh, of course, business people are smart people. They can grasp the, the, the ideas and concepts and, and, and uh, the knowledge, but they will, they will hardly put it to their uh, implementation. Uh, that's why it, uh, it's a lot of time we're taken to adapt technical trees knowledge to business and new terminology, new um, uh, descriptions of inventive principles, inventive standards, everything was required. But again, let's come back to three postulates of uh, modern trees. All business systems evolve through emergence and elimination of contradictions. It is in technology and in business. All systems evolve according to specific trends and regularities. It is both in technology and business. And all business systems evolve according to increasing their degree of ideality. What is ideal system? An ideal system is a system which function is delivered, but a system does not exist. <laughs> Um, for, techni for technology, we definitely would like to have... So people don't need, for, need systems. They need functions delivered by these systems. You see? Uh, and, the, and of course, I, if you look at the painting, for instance, or works of art, uh, that's question. Do we only need functions? Definitely not. We need something else. We need something more material. That's why I say that trees is good for technology and business, but it's questionable for uh, works of art or social life, social systems, and so on. But okay, go back to business systems. Contradiction. Contradiction is a core concept of trees. Altshuler found that um, all the products, when they evolve by gradually improving uh, their parameters, finally stick. And uh, uh, the parameter cannot be improved anymore with the previous way, previous uh, way, principle of delivering the parameter. And finally, evolution of an object, according to certain parameter, uh, faces a contradiction. Like, uh, what is contradiction? Contradiction is a philosophical term where in one sentence there are two opposite uh, things, like a snow is 
cold and warm. So can be snow cold and warm at the same time. No, definitely not. A tea is cold and warm. Can a tea can be cold and warm at the same time? Definitely not. A sand is hard and soft at the same time. Can a sand can be hard and soft at the same time? No, definitely. But some problems require us to have two opposite properties at the same time. And Ray says that to obtain an inventive solution, a contradiction must be fully removed. No compromise, no optimization, a contradiction must cease to exist. Well, let's have a look at the business world. Um, yeah, a store must be open at night to increase sales and at the same time closed at night to avoid extra cost for personnel. An employee must be fired for a company uh, to, to uh, must leave a company in order to save the company budget, but at the same time must stay at the company because uh, the company <coughs> loses key competence by losing the, the employee. A company is willing to make its services fully transparent so the customers could see what's going on, but at the same time it doesn't want to make it fully transparent uh, to let cast, uh, competitors not to learn about their services. A company has to implement a new technology to increase performance, but at the same time doesn't want to implement to avoid risks. A service should include extra functions to better satisfy a client, and at the same time should not include extra functions to avoid extra costs. So you see, it's all contradictions similar to technical contradictions. And the way of eliminating those contradictions are very similar to uh, uh, to, to, to contradictions <coughs> in technology. Not the same, not the same, but very similar. At, at the level of ideas, they are almost the same at the abstract level, but on a specific level, there are some difference. And um, when we solve problems, um, when we need to find a solution out of the box, you know that most of companies use brainstorm. Brainstorm is good to solve problems of a low level of complexity. Uh, I'll sure back in the 70s identified that there are five levels of uh, complexity or difficulty with problem solving. Uh, problems, uh, a solution to which requires finding, uh, making uh, from one to ten attempts, he placed at level one. Problems from 10 to 100 attempts, he placed to level 2. Level 3, 100,000 attempts. Level 4, 1,000, 10,000 attempts. And level 5, more than 10,000 attempts. In my 30 years of training and <coughs> delivering consulting services uh, for customers, I was usually called when to solve, to solve, um, to deal with problems of levels three to five. Because level one, yeah, those problems can be easily solved with traditional brainstorming. You don't need to solve to make trees here. Um, partly level two companies, also, uh, problems could also, challenges can also be solved with level, without trees. Uh, trees is needed when we have uh, problems where we applied a lot of trials already but didn't get any result. That's where we need trees. Um, let's, let's have a look at case. Um, here in the Netherlands there is a company which is called Eurocarbon. Uh, it exists since 1982. The founder of the company was inventor of overbraiding machine. This overbreeding machine helps to create uh, parts made from uh, carbon fibers. You know what carbon fibers are. Uh, you, you, you create a part like, uh, 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 like a part of the engine or, or, or a hole or, uh, which are extremely strong 
but at the same time very lightweight. And what is also good, the, uh, these constructions from, uh, fiber, uh, uh, from, from carbon fibers are very much shock absorbing. And he's, he invented a special overbraiding machine. When I went to this company, it was 2007, first time. In, uh, in 2007, uh, the company was the same size as in 1982. So almost 25 years, the company didn't grow. Why? Well, uh, there, is, there was an article in the NRC Dark Blood. That's one of the most important uh, and central Dutch newspapers which presented this case. Eurocarbon owner Arnold Voskam has been talking to the car manufacturers <coughs> for almost a decade. I gave lectures about this throughout Europe. There were also people from BMW and Daimler Chrysler in the room. They were hooked up because the material is also very capable, capable of absorbing energy in event of collision. You can hit a wall at 180 kilometers per hour and still get out of it. But all these dozens of years of talking did not came, uh, didn't result in anything. BMW said that it's quite a bump to work with such a small company as Eurocarbon. So the goal of my consulting job was to help to solve this vicious loop. Because it's a typical vicious loop in system dynamics, probably you know it. A uh, customer asks, can you guarantee 100% delivery in time uh, with meeting all specs required? And Eurocarbon says, yes, we will invest, uh, expand and organize production, but if only if you guarantee that the deal will be closed. There were investors which were willing to invest to expand Eurocarbon facilities, production, equipment, and so on. But a customer replies, but we only will close the deal if you demonstrate that you have capacity and guarantee 100% timely delivery with meeting all specs and demand required. So you see, it's a clear, vicious loop. <clears throat> In this case, you remember this uh, uh, area, uh, blue area, uh, uh, no, no, red area with a, a problem solving. Oh, when I show three large circles of business trees, there was a first area. First area, it's a process. A process consists of six steps. Uh, at the first stage, we, um, first three steps, we analyze the problem. We look in what creates a problem. What is the cause of problem? What are key contradictions which do not allow us to solve a problem? And uh, I must say that um, a complex problem is created not by a single contradiction. Uh, a complex problem is created by a number of contradictions, which we today can distinguish uh, through uh, the tools of trees. We can analyze problem and to expand and present all these contradictions in a form of tree, which creates all these contradictions. So once we identify which contradictions are core or key, we go to the uh, step of creative steps, where we try to remove these contradictions and obtain solution ideas. And the large steps, two steps, we do evaluation of the ideas found and uh, select the most potential idea. Well, a similar process was um, applied to Eurocarbon case. Um, value stream mapping, uh, root conflict analysis, inventive principles, uh, matrix of selecting inventive principles, uh, building solution portfolio, and finally uh, defining the solutions landscape. Landscape where we identify idea performance versus integral value, time, cost to market and cost to owner. Uh, and in the green square we have the best ideas or ideas with the best potential and in the red square we have ideas with the lowest potential all right oh once that's where three stops we do not explore 
and implement these ideas. Uh, well, what to do next is a uh, customer um, preference. Either we can help a customer to find someone who will come with implementation and execution, or a customer tries to um, implement the uh, idea himself. Um, well, the idea of trees, the, the, the power of trees, is not that with trees you only accelerate time for solutions. With trees you um, also create ideas with a high level of ideality. And the more ideal solution is, the easier and cheaper would be to implement it. It's obvious. Okay, so the uh, process took approximately two weeks. And we came up with several new ideas, new for Eurocarbon, uh, like technology networking and co-development with large customers. So we found that the uh, core contradiction in this case was that a company, Eurocarbon, has to be big to satisfy customer needs. And on the other hand, it has to stay small to avoid risks, which would come after large investments. If there are large investments but not enough orders, then the company would go bankrupt. So <clears throat> this uh, contradiction was solved by a principle of transition to super system. A new company was called, was, was uh, created together with Eurocarbon. Uh, when I came to them, they were only in this building. And the company was called Eurobrader. And Eurobrader was a joint company of Eurocarbon and their core customer. Well, in this case, BMW. Um, well, and they, uh, in, they, they got orders from BMW for a roof beam, for crash cones, and um, uh, they changed their strategy. Uh, they said now that together we'll make a difference. Together we'll make a difference. They created a network of agents all worldwide and um, uh, drastically grew their business. Well, at this um, slide I just give examples of typical problems I deal with during the last five years. Well, I will not uh, explain them. You will uh, later see the presentation. Uh, these are companies which uh, uh, are customers of uh, ICG TNC. You see these uh, banks, uh, consulting companies, insurance companies, IT companies, technological companies like Eurocarbon is a technological company, uh, food production companies and retailers. Is it available? The question is, how do you like, to, if you like to uh, go into business trees to learn it. Yes, it is available. Um, three years ago, or four years ago, we created uh, an association on business trees, www.businesstrees.net. You can click on it and see there are uh, YouTube videos of previous conferences. It's in Russian and in English, but uh, everything is available all the talks, so you can uh, see different talks from different people. And the next conference will be on May 1920, it's only online, uh, in the time which is available for, <laughs> which is comfortable for most of, of you. Um, well, I have large experience with delivering services, training services. It's, it's photos from my business trees workshops, either introductory or advanced workshops. You see India, China, Poland, Belarus, Taiwan, Jordan, UK, Ukraine, Austria, Switzerland, even Russia. <laughs> uh, we have a program, each three levels, uh, there are program, level one, level two, level three. Uh, programs are available both offline, online, and face-to-face -face and hybrid formats, and uh, certified, with a certification. Okay, that's all what I wanted to tell you within 40 minutes. Unfortunately, there is no more, but uh, we have questions and answers. Uh, there are, uh, there are uh, contacts.
contact data so you can reach me anytime and uh, thank you very much for your attention please questions and answers um uh, thank you valerie it was very interesting welcome i have attended quite a few of your webinars oh, yeah. seminars, and each time i learn something new <laughs> um, now we have a couple of uh, questions uh, the first question is a pdf copy of your presentation will be available i hope the answer is yes yes definitely definitely right. everybody will receive it tomorrow excellent um now uh ring h m strokes uh, i apologize if i uh, mispronounced your name uh, has one comment and one question. Uh, the comment is uh, that Eurocarbon was a great example. Uh, yes, it was. And the question is, uh, could you please explain how the 40 plus basic principles of trees are helpful in solving uh, problems, business problems? Uh, what principle? What principles? Sorry. Uh, 40 inventive principles. Ah, 40 inventive principles. Uh, definitely. Uh, first of all, I can show you what are these 40 inventive principles. And uh, you see, if you know the original 40 inventive principles, you will see the difference between the original uh, principles and the uh, uh, principles which are in business trees. Um, wait a second, it will take just uh, one minute. Okay. Okay. Um, 40 techniques to technical principles, 40. Okay. Because um, uh, the idea are the same uh, of a principle, but uh, the fitting is different. Um, the, 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 okay, let me show you, it will be very... So probably you remember the trees technical principles, but now I show you trees business principles. Um, because, Valerie, I, I saw in your presentation when you mentioned the Eurocarbon example, yeah, yeah. this diagram yeah. with all the different principles, and I was wondering if it would be the same as with the technical trees. Uh, no, no, no. The matrix is very different, and matrix is created by Daryl Mann. <coughs> it is called Business Matrix version 3.0. You can purchase it at the systematic-innovation.com uh, by Daryl Mann. It's about 20 euros or, or pounds, something like that. And it's available in electronic format too. Uh, so, but I, I just want to show for others uh, uh, this um, mm, share screen. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, okay. I will share the screen. Yeah, and this, um, yeah, so you see, these are principles. Number one, segmentation. Uh, it's almost the same as, um, uh, as a technical principle, but much more extended recommendation, number of recommendations. And examples are taken from business. Uh, there are principles which are where the number of recommendation is much more than in um, in in, tech, in technology. Yeah, so you see, that because uh, they also present the principle for uh, objects and also for processes. Because uh, one of the big difference of thinking of an engineer and a business person is that engineer usually thinking. <coughs> thinks in terms of systems, but business people think in terms of processes. Because if you look at the classical uh, 40 inventive principles, they are all for objects, but we adapted them to be like um, to be ad accessible for print, uh, for process as well. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Valerie. Uh, we have two questions from uh, Bing. Um, they're a little bit long, so uh, I, I will take a liberty of uh, condensing them. Uh, so, question number one. Um, trees uh, is not mathematics and 
contrary to mathematics, this doesn't generate solutions on its own. In other words, when you solve an equation, the, equa the rules of mathematics produce, help you produce uh, the exact answer. Uh, but this just gives suggestions, recommendations, guidelines. So uh, people tell me, uh, that is uh, Mr. Han, uh, that this cannot be used directly. How do you think about this thing? What would be your... Um, first of all, mathematics is a formal science, and uh, in formal science you get uh, equation of solutions, equation where you know exactly how many solutions you will get. That's correct. In uh, mathematics deal with closed problems, but RISO deals with open-ended problems. To each problem which is open-ended, there are, might be generated an infinite number of solutions. And the more difficult your problem is, the more number of solutions you have to um, move through. So you see that problem with Eurocarbon, it existed for a decade, 10 years. 10 years, the owner tried to solve it. <coughs> with trees, it took us two weeks to come up with a solution which was totally outside of the area of solution space uh, which were explored by the owner of the company. So, what you do with trees, if large, uh, large um, uh, area space, which you have to explore to find a solution to the open-ended problem, a difficult open-ended problem, you have to make, like I showed, 10,000 more, maybe more trials, and it took, might take all your life. But trees is drastically uh, compresses the space and it places you within the sector where the right solutions um, directions are. Yes, trees doesn't give you exact solutions, but it gives you directions to strongest, towards strongest solutions. In this case, you, for especially difficult problems, you eliminate a huge time which you would spend otherwise. Uh, thank you, Valerie. And uh, the second question from Mr. Han. Uh, during uh, Business Trees workshop, many experienced practitioners in business and management told me that the problem can also be fastly solved just with rich industry experience, uh, so there is no need for using trees. Uh, so what is the advantage of Business Trees for them? Uh, what changes do you think trees can actually bring? to uh, such people. Exactly. It's the same with technology. Take a starting engineer, give him a, a problem, an inventive problem, inventive problem. He will struggle. Take an engineer with 40, 30 years of experience. He will instantly solve this problem, as especially if the problem is of level one or two of complexity. But a level three your immense rich experience, because it's never been solved in your area, your 30, 40 years of experience means absolutely nothing. <clears throat> For solving problems of a low level of uh, complexity, of course, rich experience plays immense role. But for problems which were never solved, your rich experience doesn't mean anything. Believe me, 30 years every day work. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks, Valerie. One more question uh, from Andres uh, Lovich. Uh, the technical 40 IP and the standard solutions, uh, 40 inventory principle and the standard solutions are based on patent analysis. What is the database uh, for business trees, mm -hmm. please? Um, unfortunately, there is no such database uh, for patents for business solutions. So business solutions I mostly accumulate through literature, uh, through talks to my customers, uh, through uh, reading magazines, and um, uh, so on. So, um, for instance, to create a system of inventive standards, <coughs> it is based on thousands of described solutions. On thousands of described solutions. Thousand two hundred described solutions. Uh, thank you. Now we have a question from Eknath. Again, I am sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, how can we apply trees in network marketing? Uh, we have to find a problem. 
we have to define a problem for network marketing. There are two starting points from trees. Uh, first starting point, <clears throat> if we want to improve something or innovate something, we have to analyze an existing system or a process, find disadvantages, and apply trees uh, patterns and rules to eliminate these disadvantages. And second is to apply patterns of systems evolution. In this case, we'll take network marketing and analyze it and put its state of the art on the radar plot of 35 lines of evolution. And according to each line of evolution, we will see the evolution potential for network marketing. It, it, is, it, it can be done in one minute to show you, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just described you two processes with which we can improve or innovate network marketing. Uh, next question from Harsha Gangan. Um, I would like to ask one question as a student of business trees. Similar to database of the past case studies in technical trees, whether there is a database repository of the business trees cases which can be uh, referred to while studying, practicing business trees? Uh, we are creating one. We are creating one because uh, I, I trained around 1,000, 1,500 st 1, students by now, all three levels. And um, uh, level three is not available in English yet, but it, it's going to be available this year. Um, but I trained about 1,500 people. And a case, you know, that I train on the basis of uh, real problems. So those all real problems are um, stored now in one big archive, which is available to my students. Uh, but we are building a new archive. And uh, how, how long it will take, I, I expect in approximately two years, well, be frank, uh, I don't want to hurry. In approximately two years, we are going to have a repository for trees cases for business trees. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, um, another question from Young Won Sun. Uh, can you explain more about your business uh, contradiction matrix with new parameters explaining business features? How did you extract these business parameters? Oh, you no, no, no. No. Answer that question. Uh, no, no, I did not extract this. It is done by Daryl Mann. Uh, Daryl Mann uh, was one of the first who joined me, by the way, in developing business trees since 1999. I told you about this story. And in 2003, he wrote a, a book, um, Hands-on Innovation for Business and Management. And now he is only interested in um, contradiction matrix. And contradiction matrix 3.0 uh, 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 consists of 45, uh, 45 uh, parameters, business parameters. Um, I I can show you now at this moment, but it's it's not by me. It's uh, not by me. A couple more questions. One of them is super interesting. I think. <laughs> um, a question from H. F. Shong. How can we apply trees in helping weak students in their studies? <laughs> First of all. We have to define what do you mean with weak, because weakness it's um, it's a general term, but it can be um, it can refer to different uh, incapabilities. For instance, a weak memory, or a, um, or an autism, and so on. So weakness can can be positioned in different categories, and with each category. We have to deal differently, I believe. Uh, I have um, approximately, I trained about 8,000 people by now. And right now I have online training, which is much more individual than before. And definitely I have uh, fast moving students and I have slow moving students. But slow moving are not weak, you know, they are slow moving. That's a problem because uh, each course has a certain t uh, tempo and uh, all students have to keep up this uh, tempo uh, to be successful because, well, 
uh, I cannot deal with students for years. Uh, but um, when I see that a person is creative, is good doing, but is slow moving, I put him aside and deal separately. So each weak uh, student has his incapability or disadvantage, which has to be targeted individually. And if uh, there is a wish to train weak student, they have to be dealt individually. That's my opinion. I don't see any other way. I don't see any other way. Or uh, weak student with the same incapability can be collected into a cluster. And with different incapabilities can be collected in different clusters. And these different clusters can be taught separately. I don't see any other way to solve this problem. Uh, thanks, Valerie. And now the question of the hour, if not of the century. Uh, how to make a million dollars as a trees consultant? You don't need to be a trees consultant. You don't need to be a trees consultant. Absolutely. Listen, when I arrived here to the Netherlands, it was 31 years ago, I met one of the millionaires. Uh, he had many millions already. <laughs> and he was relatively young. And he told me, Valerie, there is absolutely so easy. I don't understand what people, what's boss about how to make millions. You, what you do, you find a business which you want to do and make a plan. Okay, you want to sell carrots. Okay, how many carrots you can sell per month? Okay, then calculate how many months you need to earn a million. And that's it. And then go and execute your plan. You know, um, it's not a joke. It is true. Uh, I once <laughs> set up how, many, how much money I earned from my training and from my consulting. And finally, I made the first million. <laughs> What's wrong about it? You don't need trees for it. It's much easier than trees. Most important is to find what people need, what you can offer, and to meet these two ends. That's it. That's it. And w of course you can find, um, people say that to make millions you need investments. You need uh, cash to invest. Uh, but there are things like uh, you don't need cash. You don't need it at all. Especially if you are um, dealing with intellectual property businesses. Yeah, no. But mm -hmm. if, 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 if you are talking about million, okay, if you are talking about trees, then trees can help you to find this area, a niche of the market, where you can make your million. That is, yeah, trees can help it. Or if you face problems, trees can help you. Or if you face um, difficulty to uh, get resources, trees can help you. Because trees uh, helps to find resources, so search for resources. So basically, yes, trees can help. But in general, you don't need to trust to make millions. Believe me, making a million is much, much easier than to making a good invention. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, Valerie. I hope uh, Ahmed finds your answer to this Now, we have uh, one more minute uh, before we have to wrap up uh, the webinar. If you have a quick question, there is a chance to, uh, to, to ask it, but it should be a very quick question. Uh, which implies a, a very short, even shorter answer. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess there are no more questions. Valerie, thanks so much for uh, enlightening uh, us about the application of uh, trees in business, about uh, business trees. Uh, I'm sure that people have more questions they can think of, and they you can uh, send for their questions to Valerie directly. And uh, let me tell you that about in a month or so, uh, we're going to have another webinar in this uh, series on um, uh, by Matriz Official. Uh, you will uh, get notified about it uh, in time. Again, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, have a great balance of your day, whatever it is, night or uh, early morning. And take care, everyone. Thank you, Valerie, again. Thank you, Victor. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye.